everyone, it's Patty from Wife and Mom's Life. Today I wanted to talk to you about transitioning your baby into your toddler's room. We live in a two bedroom apartment and my daughter had the room all to herself and we recently transitioned. It's actually been about two and a half, three months since we transitioned my son, who's almost nine months, um, into my daughter's room. And so I wanted to share with you five tips that helped us transition our baby into our toddler's room so they could share a room. And just a little background, um, our son was sleeping in our room. Not We were not co-sleeping, he was sleeping in a rock and play. And that's just what we decided to do and what we felt was worked for us. And then we transitioned him into our daughter's room at six months old. So the number one tip I would give you, and this is, I'm sorry, this is actually going to be the number five. We're going to count down. <laughs> so number five, I recommend having black out curtains. This is something we did recently. We transitioned my son into my daughter's room at when the time changed and now it is really bright outside. We try to put them down between 7 and 7.30 and it is still daylight outside and my daughter will be singing and playing with her stuffed animals and stuffed dolls in her bed and it's just really hyper which would wake up my son. So we decided to get some blackout curtains and that has changed our lives. They have been amazing. My daughter will fall asleep a little bit faster and she, even if she doesn't fall asleep right away, she still is calmer when the blackout curtains are there because it's not as bright outside. So I definitely recommend black out curtains. Number four, have a sound machine. A sound machine is really important because a lot of times your toddler, your baby will wake up or your toddler doesn't fall asleep at the same time as your baby. Us personally, we like to put the kids down at the same time. That way they're just in bed and calm together. I think it's good to just put them down at the same time so the sound machine is really helpful because they both put themselves to sleep and sometimes um, my, our son, the baby, falls asleep right away. But my daughter sometimes will sit, be singing and rolling around and stuff. So as long as the sound machine's on, she normally doesn't wake up our son. So that's super helpful. Number three, I definitely recommend to prepare your toddler ahead of time. What we did when um, we knew it was going to be coming close to our son moving into our daughter's room. Our daughter was still in a crib. She never climbed out of her crib and we were kind of spoiled in that. So we knew we had to go ahead and change her to her big girl bed before we transitioned our son. So several months before we knew we were going to be moving our son into the room, we went and bought our daughter a whole new bed, bed spread and we, re we redecorated her side of the room and we just got her excited about moving into a big girl bed and excited about having her own space. That way she didn't feel like our son was taking over her room and taking everything from her. She we made it really special for her before we transitioned him. We gave her plenty of time to get used to her bed before we moved him in there. So we wanted to do that several months before he moved into the room. And I just feel like that preparation of getting your toddler ready will make the transition much smoother. Number two, I definitely recommend having a schedule. This is really important. I think it's important for kids to have schedules in general, but especially when both kids are sharing a room. Obviously, there's times where you might have a family event or you might have a family outing and the kids go to bed later. But in general, it's good for them to have a good established nighttime routine so that they know what to expect when it's time for bed. So for us, our nighttime routine is pretty much dinner, bath, then calm down time, which calm down time for us is I'm feeding the baby while my daughter sits on the couch and reads some books. This kind of sets the tone for bedtime. Then once bedtime comes, I I read both, my son will kind of hang out with our baby after he's done eating, and or I'm sorry, my husband will hang out with our 
baby <laughs> after he's done eating. And I will read books to my daughter just so she can have some one-on-one -on -one time. We'll say our prayers and then we'll put them both down at the same time. That is what works for us. We try to put them down between 7 and 7.30 every night just so they are used to that routine. That has what is what works for us. They know what to expect. Obviously, the baby doesn't know too much and he's pretty much ready for bed anyways and he falls asleep really fast. But my daughter has, we've been doing this with her since she was really little, so she knows now that's what we expect and she kind of isn't crazy. Sometimes she's crazy, actually, but for the most part, she's not super crazy and out of whack if we follow that routine. And my number one tip when transitioning a baby into a toddler's room is have realistic expectations. I actually expected the worst when I was going to be moving my son into my daughter's room, but it was actually pretty good. They did fairly well in the beginning. My daughter accepted him really well into her room. The baby did really good. They, they really did well. They weren't really waking up each other. Then we went on vacation. And when we went on vacation, but when we got back, things have just been crazy. My son has started getting, he just got, he got two teeth at the same time and they were his first two teeth. So he's been waking up where before he was really only waking up once at night. So I think just having realistic expectations, knowing things might change and then things will get back to normal. Just kind of trying to go with the flow. I am not a go with the flow person, so I have to constantly be reminding myself, okay, just have realistic expectations. Know that sometimes they're going to do amazing and there's no problems with them sharing a room. Then sometimes they might wake up each other because one is sick and one is not sick. And just as long as you know sometimes not everything's going to be perfect, I think that'll kind of help you adjust to, oh, these, this week was rough and oh the next week they're back to normal you know i think as long as we keep that mindset it'll help us get through the sharing room process so those are my five tips on how to transition a baby into a toddler's room i hope they were helpful to you comment down below and let me know what are some of your way some ways that you maybe have two kids sharing a room what are some helpful things that you did if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Also, let me know in the comments if you like these types of videos, if you want to see more baby and toddler tips and how we share, how they share things, how they share rooms, different things. We are in a small space, so a lot of um, what we deal with is things in a small space. So if you struggle with certain things with small spaces, let me know. Maybe I can make a video on it. Thanks for, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.